What I'm going to do now is just take apart this carburetor. This is what was on the tractor. You can see it's filthy dirty on the outside. And then on the inside, we've got a little bit of fine rust down in there, but not, not too bad. Um, so this is the choke side, and this is the, uh, the engine side. Not too bad, um, you know, for something that you pulled out of a field. Now I'm just going to clean off all this dust and grime. I'm going to start taking it apart. Nope, not too bad. Once it broke free, it's turning nice and nice and smoothly. Oh, so that's pretty pretty right down in there. That's pretty rusty. Get my rubber mallet. I don't know if you can see that. So up inside that, that's where the uh, that emulsion tube is. You know, the fuel has to get up in through there. And that's just, that's not packed, but it was for sure rusted down there at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tap this off. Turning up. Okay. So here's the inside. So that float is rusted down right now. You just see all up in there. Definitely fuel sat in it for a long time. And then it um, went away, you know, evaporated away. But uh, well, it's not the worst. Those threads are in great shape. I don't know if you can see that. They're not even chewed up down at the bottom, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to take out all of these. Uh, brass plugs right now. This is an easy plug, typically. The most important thing is just making sure you've got a screwdriver that properly fits. And then don't be in a hurry. Or I mean sometimes these will just shear off. They are just brass. But I've had a drill I've had to drill them out sometimes and that's always a little bit of a pain, but That one's good, yeah. That one's smaller. But... Oh, that's a tight one. I gotta get this one out. I might heat it a little bit with my torch. That sometimes helps. Let's try for this one. Oh man, that one's tight too. But when I heat that, that'll heat too. Let me get this big plug out here. That one too. Let me get my torch, I'll heat that up. Act as a hot pad. For a minute while I Try to get these out. There we go. Got it. Then this one. Let's see if we can get this one. There we go. Got it. 
Make sure that's in there all the way. That works great. And these two, you gotta be really careful, especially with that all being all corroded. You really don't wanna break anything down there. So, just gotta be really careful. Okay, I don't wanna break that one. Use this one. Got that one. Okay. I'm gonna heat this a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit of heat there. It's gonna twist off. This is always the hardest one, the very last screw. Please. Got it. Okay. And I can already see, I don't know if you can see down in there very well. but it is full of rust down in there. So now this is a hard part. To get that emulsion tube out, you can see down in there. I don't know if you can, maybe if I get a light. You see there's that tube down in there. Looks, I don't think I have one around here, but, um. Got to pull that out. The tool that works really well for that is just the slide hammer like this. Sometimes if it's just a big, um, big gnarly screw like that, you can screw that into the brass and it'll have enough bite and it'll pull it out. Other times you'll have to use a quarter inch 20 tap, tap that in there and then um, Use a, a bolt like this. If you have one that's threaded all the way up, like this, screw that in there. Probably can't see. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but you can run the bolt in the washer down the screw there, and it'll basically, just like a flywheel puller, just suck that right out. But it's not going to be easy, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tap that, and then we're going to try to pull that out. Quarter inch 20 tap on this emulsion tube is a little bit big. So I ended up using, I found a, I have a, a bolt here with a nut on it. That is, uh, it's a metric size. It's an M6 by 1.0. That fit really nicely down in there. So now I'm going to screw this in here. far as we can. And hopefully, okay. Now, that's three eighths. There's my team right there. Okay, now I'm gonna need to get another 10 millimeter. Okay, hopefully this works. That washer is centered right there at the top of this. I'm putting some pressure on it, not a ton, not a ton yet. Oh, you hear that? Here it comes. Coming right out. There it goes. So that right there, you can see all of that rust right there, and you've got holes. You got a hole there, 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 
all up and down this, and all of these holes are just clogged full of this super fine rust. So you've really got to clean those out. Um, I have a piece of, this is just a piece of MIG welder wire. I think it's 30 thousandths. Let's see. This hole there. Hole there. That one you is still clean. That one's clogged. I think there's one up here too. Maybe there's not one up that high. But anyway, all up and down that, you got to get all those tubes, or all those holes in this tube cleaned. Okay, so I got this taken apart. I got the float out. You can see just how much junk is on it. We'll see if there's any holes in this. Might still be a good float. If not, we might have to buy a new one. And then there's this. You can just see how much rust. Oh, there's the needle. Little valve. I mean, this is just loose rust. It doesn't even count what's caked in there. Yeah, this is really dirty. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to soak it in carb cleaner for the next day or so. And then come back, make sure, clean all the scale and stuff off of this. My wire brush, after it's soaked, same thing here, clean that off. I'm going to clean all of these, this bucket of parts off. Check this float. We'll paint it. Put it back together. So we'll do that in a couple days. So it's still pretty dirty down inside there. There's the main carburetor, carburetor body. Set this down there, there, and then in the meantime, I'm going to put all of these other parts. I'll float, put the float last. I'm going to dump all of these other parts inside. I'm not going to let them soak for as long, but I'll give them a day or so in there. I've just got a rag. I'm just going to wipe everything down really good. So I've just spent the last half hour after pulling this out of that bucket of carburetor cleaner where it had been soaking. I'm going ahead and cleaning the outside of the carburetor, just wiping that down. But more importantly, um, spending some quality time um, getting rid of all of the rust and the scale that was down inside of this carburetor, uh, inside the float bowl and on the stem here. So there was just a lot of rust there. The carburetor cleaner is not really going to eat that. So the only way to get that out is just to, uh, to scrape it out. Or if you had a bead blaster, you might be able to use that, but I don't have one of those. So I just use, this is just a small file, just using a small file, just going ahead and scraping everything out. And this, this right here, this is just a portion of what I scraped out of there. I tried to just save it. This is about a third of it. There's just a lot of this really fine oxidated metal that you really got to get out of there and clean it out. Now that we have the carburetor clean and free from all the grease and grime and all the rust that was down um, on this carburetor, especially down in this stem and in the bowl, we can go through and we can clean, make sure that all of the passageways that the fuel needs to go through are, are clear. Now, disclaimer, I'm not an expert on these carburetors, um, but I have been through quite a few of them, and so I can just show you what I know. Um, pretty simple. You have your load circuit on one side, right here, load. And then on this other side, you have your idle circuit, okay? On the load side, it's really pretty simple. You have, um, I'll just use... I don't know if you can see this wire right here, but the load needle goes through 
all the way down through here and it goes in through this little hole right here in the stem. It goes through the stem and then there it makes its way through the stem, th through that hole down into the main, the main open cavity of the stem. This is where your emulsion tube sits and so when you adjust the load, when you back the load needle out, it lets more fuel in here, goes through, and it lets more fuel up in through the emulsion tube and out into the tractor engine, okay? It's really pretty simple. There's not a lot of passageways there. On the other side, you have your idle circuit. On this side, you do have some more passageways, okay? You've got your idle passageway, similar to the load, similar to the load side. Your idle um, needle goes through here, down, and there's a little hole right there. So when you back the needle out, you're letting more fuel in at idle. More fuel can go through that hole. When it goes through that hole, it, there's a passageway right here next to it that goes all the way down and then over and it connects into here. And so we can check to make sure that that's clear. We'll take our wire, stick it down this passageway and you should be able to see it right here, right there. And then from this little chamber right here, there's a little hole, probably about a sixteenth of an inch or so, maybe even smaller than that. Yeah, it's smaller than that because this wire just barely fits through there. And this wire goes through here and it connects over into this, uh, this passage where the, where the idle screw sits. So when you let that... When you back the idle screw out, it lets more fuel up through here. And now we have more fuel in this chamber, in this passageway. Now this passageway connects to, you can see here you have two holes, a lower one and an upper one. This upper one, if I stick this wire through here, use this wire to clean it out, that, I don't know if you can see, down into this little passageway right there, and so this is where fuel comes up through here, and it goes down through this tube. And then in the inside of your carburetor right here and right here, you have two little holes. You want to make sure those are clear. You can check those. And this one's kind of at an angle. Make sure that those are fuel. Those are clear. That guarantees you have a good clear passage for fuel at idle. To go to make its way from the fuel the float bowl area up through your carburetor and into your your engine this larger passageway goes through here and it dead ends in the idle excuse me that's the idle adjust passageway it dead ends right here in this so if, i don't know if you can see down in there so it goes through here up into here, it goes down here. Probably can't see that. But we're looking at this hole down here. And then from this hole, if we stick a needle down, or if we stick the tube down here, it goes down here into this top area, um, this where the bowl is. And I'm thinking that probably is some sort of like a vent to vent hole some sort of vent or something like that. I don't think fuel actually goes through that. I could be wrong. So if I'm wrong, someone chime in and, and let me know. But we wanna make sure that all of these passageways are clear. Um, additionally, you have a hole here. This is on the choke side. It goes through here and it goes into the main emulsion tube chamber. Um, and then there's also another hole right here. That hole goes through and it goes into the, hopefully you can see that, it goes right down here into the idle adjust. So what I do is I go through all of those passageways. Yeah, that's why it's important to remove all of the screws so you have easy access to all of them. So I'll use a little piece, a thin piece of MIG welder wire to begin with. And then after I've done that, then I'll use just, this is just a piece of 14 gauge copper wire um, from a spool of, you know, electrical wire that you use to wire your house. Then I'll use this fatter piece of wire and I'll go through here and I'll clean out all of these passageways with this 14 gauge piece of wire. Make sure that all of the passageways are nice and clear. Even this one that goes down here. This is usually the one in my experience, the one that 
gets the clog gets clogged the most. So you really want to make sure that this wire goes all the way down and you can see it right there. You want to make sure that it's very free and clear to go up and down through that. And then after that, then you just want to make sure that there's that hole that's inside there. Probably can't see it. But trust me, there's a hole that's through there. Then you just want to make sure that that's clear over in over into where the the idle screw or idle needle goes in right here. So now we've got all of the passageways nice and clear. Then I'll go and I'll take some compressed air and I'll just blow out all of these holes with compressed air to make sure that all of them are clear. Um, yeah, that's, that's critical. So I've just pulled this basket out of the carburetor cleaner where these parts have been soaking for the last hour or two. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is just using just a piece of brown scotch bright or heavy duty scotch bright pad, just going and scrubbing all of the, the grime and the scale off of these components so that they can be uh, put back into our nice clean uh, carburetor body. You can see I've got everything painted, my carburetor body, my uh, float bowl, and then just some of the parts that stick out of the top of the carburetor. I went, I took a minute and I painted all those. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reassemble everything. I also took a minute and I made some new gaskets because my old ones were uh, pretty brittle. So I just cut those out of some gasket material uh, sheets that I had. Everything else here, I've just cleaned it up as best I could. Um, I've got all the plugs. I'm going to be putting those back in. I've got my throttle and choke uh, plates. Put those back in. Put everything back together. I don't think I need to get a new carburetor kit. Here's my needle. Sometimes your needle and seat will uh, will leak, but this one actually isn't too bad. You, it looks like there's a little bit of a ridge there, but actually that's just a little bit of polishing. And if you rub that with your fingernail, you can't feel anything. If it ends up leaking, then I can go ahead and I can throw a new needle and seat in it. But for now, I'm just gonna move ahead with, with the parts that I've got. I think they should work fine. The float, it's pretty dirty still. You recall it was pretty, uh, pretty rusty down inside my inside my float bowl but uh hit that with some with some carburetor cleaner and an s uh, not an sos but a scotch bright pad and uh, it came out pretty clean so now i'm just going to go ahead and reassemble everything okay butterfly valve for the choke and for the throttle are put back in now i'm just going to put in the uh, idle and the load needle valves. So the load one, this is the idle side, remember, with the more intricate uh, passageways. This is the load side. The load side is the longer of the two. It goes down through. And if you remember, when I took this apart, I think that was screwed out. Each one of them was, one is screwed out of, just under one full turn. The other one is screwed out just over one full turn. I think one and a half turns is kind of where you want it. So that's what I'm gonna do. All the way down. That's bottomed out. Don't go too far or else you can cause cracks down here. Lots of times when you see carburetors that are cracked, that's where they're cracked. It's, and I think it's because people tighten those down too much. So it's down all the way. So I'm gonna turn it out one And about a half. It's not exact, but it's good enough. We'll adjust it once we get it started anyway. And then here's your idle um, idle jet, not jet, um, needle valve. So as I screw it down, you'll be able to see the, be able to see it stick the point out right there. There it is. So that's shut, one full turn and a half. Okay, so now we're gonna drop our emulsion tube in. You can see all of the emulsion tube. There was a hole earlier up there. I had a hard time finding it um, earlier on just because there was so much rust and junk on this. But now every single hole is cleaned out. It's all cleaned out on the inside and uh, hopefully I spent some time trying to clean that out as best I could, as best I could, and hopefully 
we can get that to go in there. There it goes. And I'm just going to tap it up in there with a little piece of wood and a, and a hammer just to make sure that that's seated fully. Lots of times there's a spring that holds these in. Um, this one didn't have a spring and I don't have an extra spring, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to use it without that. So there's that. Now we'll just go ahead and put together the, uh, the float pole. Okay, so I've got everything on this float pole assembled. And now as far as setting the height of the float, is if I pull up here, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but I think the float is set a little too high or a little higher than I like it. I typically like the float to be set so that when you pull up here, it's just about parallel with the top of the, the bowl right here. So it's a little bit higher than I want to, so I'm going to go ahead and I got to loosen this screw, pull it out, and then just very slightly bend, uh, bend the, the arm of the float right here. Okay, so I've got the float out. Now I'm just going to very gently, I don't want to put a lot of pressure right here and break it off, so I'm going to try to hold it here and then just very gently bend it down. That was just a tiny bit, but we'll see if that does any better. Okay, I got that float put back in, and now when you lift up on it, it's just a little bit lower than it used to be. It's pretty parallel with the top of this float bowl. There's probably a, an exact measurement. You're supposed to put a straight edge across here and then measure the height of the float bowl, but I'm not going to mess around with that. This has worked in the past, so that's what I'm going to set it at right here. Okay, when you're putting this together, don't forget to put this screw in the lower part of the of the car, uh, this lower hole right here where it connects to the air breather. Um, you won't be able to get that in once the once the the float bowl is on. I also like to put either some anti-seize or in this case I don't have any anti-seize, so I'm just using some little uh, two wraps of Teflon tape in here just to add a little bit of lubrication and to keep this nut from damaging those threads. It's not necessarily to um, to, to keep anything from leaking. It's basically just to uh, to protect those threads. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together now. Put my gasket in place. And then you want the, the fuel refilling side of your float bowl to be on the same side of your carburetor as the choke. Now, just go ahead and put this gasket in place. It's tight, but it'll work. And then go ahead and screw this down. Let's move this guy out of the way. Tighten that down. Okay, I'll need to cinch that down with a crescent wrench, but there you have it. Carburetor completely rebuilt. I didn't spend any money other than just a little bit of green paint that I had in my on my shelf, left over from other stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll go put this on that AR, and hopefully we can. Uh, hopefully it'll work right away without any leaks or anything like that. And. Uh, We'll get that tractor running. Hope you enjoyed this video.